Sisters and brothers, good evening and welcome to our evening prayer today, Saturday evening. And I'm coming to you from the church, uh, from the church building, as I'm here trying to get some work done for tomorrow. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get straight into our evening prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. And um, I'm changing the canticle tonight. This, this evening's canticle is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our evening collect. O God, our protector, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes. For you alone are our sure defense and bring us lasting peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's, um, let's have our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our, <clears throat> our psalm for this evening, our psalm for this evening is Psalm number 84. Psalm 84. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has a found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. 
they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a, a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. Oh, it's a great psalm, actually. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. It's a psalm about the sanctuary and about God's place of worship, as it were. Strange because here I am in this sanctuary, uh, in this physical place of worship. Of course, we know in the New Testament that God no longer dwells in temples made by hands. We are the sanctuary of God. But we still <clears throat> gather, of course, in buildings because where we gather, God is. Where God's people are, God is. And so as we gather in this place, we sanctify it for the purpose of worshiping God. And, it, and so we, the sanctuary of God, uh, make this building a sanctuary by our presence, by the presence of God in us as we gather here each week. Um, I will read the second part, the second commentary or reflection from Tim Keller. He calls it spiritual pilgrimage. The longing for nearness to God will not be fulfilled in a stroke. Anyone who wants God must also go on a journey. We go from one degree of strength to another. As Paul puts it, when we encounter the Lord in his word, seeing more and more who he really is by faith, we are transformed from one degree of glory to the next. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Verses 5 to 8 tell us to expect the valley of Baca, a place without water, times of dryness and difficulty. But those times are crucial for progress. God helps you find new growth through suffering. It is again honey from the rock. It is important as we walk through the Valley of Baca. The Valley of Baca is a place of desert. It's a place of dryness. It's a place of suffering. It's a place of lack. But God makes it a place of springs for our souls. And so we are to go through that valley. Not over it, but through it. We must pass through suffering in order to get to that place offspring. And so Tim is pointing out that this is a journey. It's a spiritual pilgrimage from verse 5 that we are on. And the, the, the journey is not always easy. The journey is not always, in fact, the journey is never pain-free. It's never suffering-free. We pass through the valley of that because there we find the springs that God brings. Lord, I already have enough history with you. 
to see that my driest and poorest times have been my richest. I still dread such periods, and that is right, but help me not to give up in them or forget that you are working out great things through those dry times of my spiritual life. Amen. Amen. All right, and uh, our New Testament reading, our New Testament reading, we are in Mark's Gospel. We're at the very end of Mark chapter 15, from verse 66 to the end. Mark 15, 66 to the end. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest uh, came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, she Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entrance. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around them, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing nearby said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the cock crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Sisters and brothers, what can I say about Peter's denial? Peter is all of us, isn't he? He's all of us. I said yesterday, yesterday evening, that Peter followed Jesus, but he followed at a distance. And when you follow Jesus at a distance, it's at that time that you're more likely to deny him or even betray him. And of course, Peter was such a one. And whenever we are following Jesus from a distance, we are very likely to do this. And, 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 and there are times in our spiritual journey, in our pilgrimage, where we follow him from a distance. Because the demands he places on us might be too great for us at that moment in time in our lives. That is why the Christian life is a growth it's, it's, it's ever growing. If you're not growing, I can guarantee you you're not a Christian. <laughs> it's a matter of growth. You, where you are today is not where you were last year if you're growing in your faith. Because we have all been at this place where we are likely or liable if we are given the opportunity to deny the Christ that we serve. If we are put on the spot in our workplace, in our company, in our, in, in our social gatherings, it is there are times where we are liable to simply say, no, I am not. I am not one of those people who go to church on Sundays. I am not one of those crazy folks who believe that there's in, the, in, in, in certain kind of morality that fits in with the Ten Commandments. This, you see, it's, it is easy for us to fit in with the culture because it's the, it's, it's the, it's, it's the, it's a choice of least resistance. If you, if you have a crowd or a group or a, if, you're in a, 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 if you're in a social group or a, a, a group at work and, 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 and you are tempted to, 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 to follow them and you know that it is by doing so you are denying Christ. But you do it anyway because you want to fit in. 
You don't want to be a sore thumb and stand out. Sisters and brothers, we are all Peter. We're all Peter. In some way or another, we all have denied our Lord. Now, you may not realize it, but it, we, many of us, most of us, if not all of us, have done it one time in our lives or other. Some of us are still doing it today because we do not want to, we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want our faith to be known by others. We rather keep it under a bowl rather than let it shine. And see, it is easy for us to do this. And by doing this, we are denying our Christ. We are saying, I don't know the man. I don't know him. You may not say it with your lips because many of us dare not say it with our lips. But we say it with our actions, with our attitude. You see, I know because I've been there. I've been there and I know I've been Peter. And I know you have as well. So let's not get too hard on Peter. <laughs> Because Peter is simply reflecting all of our hearts at some point in our Christian journey, if not right now. Let's pray. There's a few, there are a few things I want to, a um, few new, new prayer requests that have come in that I want to mention tonight. Um, uh, John and Dorothy has asked us to pray for two particular people, and I want to mention them tonight, and I want to pray for them. There's a lady named Auntie Janie, who lives on Odessa Road, 80, a lady in her 80s. We give thanks for her, and we pray for her during this difficult time of her life. We thank God for her faith. And so, Lord, remember Auntie Janie. Give her your strength during this difficult time and remind her, Lord, that you will never leave her nor forsake her. We also pray for Thaven, who's in Switzerland, young man um, who's had a very difficult time. We pray for him physically, emotionally, mentally. We want to Bring Thaven before you, Lord. We ask for your grace upon him at this time. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you reveal your presence to him, strengthen him in his weakness, right there, in the difficulties that he's experiencing in Switzerland. We pray, Lord, that you will give him that grace, the all-sufficient grace, May he know your presence. May he know that whatever difficulties he's going through, physically, emotionally, mentally, at this time, you are there with him. And you'll never leave him nor forsake him. And all those who cry out to you, you will hear. And so, Lord, may he cry out to you in his pain, in his suffering, even now. And may he experience your your mercy, your compassion. We ask that your Holy Spirit will empower him, fill him with joy, even in the midst of sorrow. May he have your peace, that peace, Lord, that is, that is, that is not understood by the world and even transcends our own understanding. Give him that peace, Lord. So we pray for Thaven in Switzerland. We pray, Lord, that you give him the protection he needs by the blood of Jesus Christ at this moment. Protect him from all evil. Lord, be a shield around him and keep him safe in your arms. So we pray for these two people who we have been asked to remember this day in our prayers. 
We also pray for Doreen's mom, uh, who's 92 today. We pray, we, we bring her to you, Lord. And we pray that you will bless her. Lord, we thank you for her. We thank you for her faith. We thank you for the 92 years you have given her in this life. We know that it is a, it's a short life compared to the eternity that she will spend with you one day. But right now we are giving you thanks for these long years on this earth years of fruitful years and we pray Lord that you'll be there with her even now and be with Doreen and the rest of the family at this time as they remember and celebrate uh, this, this wonderful lady's life these many years and so Lord we bring these to you tonight and others there's so many others in our hearts but I we want to remember them in our prayers this evening. So Lord, we bring to you the, the people in our own hearts, those we have been praying for over the last few days. Again, we bring them to you. We continue to pray for uh, Gigi and Dolly's uh, family in Guyana and the family they are suffering from coronavirus. We bring them to you. Uh, we bring Dolly to you and just remember her in your love and mercy, Lord, and just keep her secure and steadfast in you. May she continue to hold fast to your unchanging love and mercy, especially through difficulties and especially as family members suffer. We bring her to you tonight. We ask, Lord, that you'll remember, continue to remember Constance and Michael in Canada, uh, Maxine's family. Remember them. Remember baby Jonathan as well. Uh, Lord, we bring them to you. We pray for the students. Uh, I've been asked to pray for a young man who's been, young student, whose name I can't remember, who's suffering from COVID at, you, at university somewhere in the north. We bring him to you, Lord. Uh, we pray for that family. We pray for all the young people at university who are suffering from this virus. Uh, we pray for them. And we ask that you'll protect our dear Rihanna and Michael and other members of our church family who are, who are at university or in, in those areas that are affected greatly by this virus. We pray that you'll protect them. Protect them, Lord, from the dangers of this virus and keep them safe. Lord, watch over them today, tonight, in all their going and coming as they interact with others at the university. Keep them safe, Lord, we pray. Like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings, just gather these young people and protect them from the violence without, the pestilence on the outside, and from any temptations within. And so, dear Lord, we, we bring our own church to you. This, this building, Lord, which is a symbol of your mercy and grace and your salvation in this community, we bring this building to you, Lord, Without you, this is just an empty edifice. But Lord, with you, it can become a powerful symbol of your mercy and grace and love right here in this community. And so Lord, we pray that this building will serve as a sign of your love to those around us. When others look on this building, especially on the cross at the front, they will see their need of Christ. They will see their need of Jesus. May this building be a sign uh, to point people to Jesus, people in this community to Christ. May it be a signpost to say this is the way to salvation. Come and find the way, the truth, 
and the life. And so, Lord, we pray for your uh, sanctification of this building, for your, for your Blessing is the word I'm looking for. Blessing on this building that as we gather in it, you will keep us safe from, uh, from the virus. Watch over us as we share fellowship with one another and as we worship you. Lord, may all our worship done in this space be acceptable to you. May it be done in spirit and in truth. And that, Lord, we will not come here to exalt ourselves, but we'll come here to lift Jesus higher and to proclaim his name from the rooftops, as it were, and that his name and his fame may be bellowed from this building into this world. In through our voices and through our lives. So Lord, even as we gather in the morning, those of us who are coming here, and those, and even those of us, Lord, who are not able to make it here, but, are, but are, are able to join us via the technology, we give you thanks for that. Because during this very difficult time, we thank you, Lord, that we can still, as it were, have church with those who are remote, but yet are connected to us in spirit and in truth, in worship, in their living room, in their bedroom, in their dining room, from home, but yet very much connecting with our spirit as we gather here. We pray, Lord, that as we gather, whether remotely or physically, we pray that you will empower us by your spirit so that we will leave this place and we will go out into the world showing Christ to those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a long prayer tonight. Let's, uh, let's have our night prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace, and let your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight uh, and forever. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.